guys, welcome back to MediClass. Today we shall learn about the different forms of cementum and also the difference between cellular cementum and acellular cementum. Cementum is a calcified tissue. It is avascular and it has a mesenchymal origin. It also forms the outer covering of the anatomic root. As you can see in the image, cementum can occasionally cover small portions of the crown. That is, it can overlap the enamel at the CEJ. As you can see in this image, some part of cementum covers the enamel around the CJ. Cementum does not have blood or lymph vessels. It does not have any innervation. Neither does it undergo physiologic resorption or remodeling. As you can see in this image, cementum is free of any blood vessels or nerve endings. However, it is characterized by continuous deposition throughout the life. Whenever there is any kind of trauma or fracture to the tooth or any kind of excessive orthodontic tooth movement, there could be resorption and the cementum can fill these resorbed areas. Now, based on the presence and absence of cells in cementum, cementum can be divided into two types, the acellular type and the cellular type. In this image, you can see that the cellular cementum occupies the coronal one-third or coronal half of the tooth root, whereas the cellular cementum occupies the apical one-third or apical half of the tooth root. You can see that the acellular cementum is much thinner in dimension compared to the cellular cementum, and the cellular cementum contains cells called as cementocytes, whereas the acellular cementum lacks the presence of any kind of cells. If you concentrate on the apical zone here, this is a ground section of the tooth root where you can see the acellular cementum and cellular cementum. There's a difference in the appearance of these two types of cementum. The cellular cementum contains cells, whereas the acellular cementum does not contain any cells. This is a ground section showing the distribution of the acellular cementum in the coronal half or coronal one third of the tooth, where you can see it's very thin in this zone whereas the cellular cementum occupies the apical zone where it is thinner compared to the acellular cementum. Also, the cellular cementum occupies the zones near the furcation areas. Now, what's the difference between acellular cementum and cellular cementum? The acellular cementum is also called primary cementum because it's first form and the cellular cementum is called secondary cementum because it is formed after the acellular cementum. Now, as we saw in the image, the acellular cementum occupies the coronal one-third or coronal half of the tooth root and the cellular cementum occupies the apical half or the apical third of the tooth root. As the name suggests, the acellular cementum does not have any cells, whereas the cellular cementum contains cementocytes. These are the cementocytes which are present in individual lacunae or individual spaces. Now, the acellular cementum forms before the tooth reaches the occlusal plane and the cellular cementum forms after the tooth reaches the occlusive plane. This is the picture showing root development. These, this is the acellular afibular cementum and the cementoplast cells which secrete the cementum. Now before the tooth reaches the occlusal cavity, there is formation of this type of acellular cementum and that's why it is said that the acellular cementum forms before the tooth reaches the occlusal plane. The tooth development is still not complete. However, since the cellular cementum is present at the apical portion below the acellular cementum, it only forms after the tooth reaches the occlusive plane. Now, the rate of formation of acellular cementum is slow compared to the cellular cementum, which is 30 times faster. That's because the cellular cementum has got different cells to work faster compared to the acellular cementum. Now, the acellular cementum also has more number of Sharpies fibers and the cellular cementum has got less number of Sharpies fibers. What are Sharpies fibers? Sharpies fibers are those fibers of the periodontal ligament which get inserted onto the cementum on one end and also gets inserted onto the other end into the alveolar bone. So the ends of periodontal ligament fibers which get inserted onto the cementum and these are more calcified, these are called as Sharpies fibers. So the acellular cementum which is present in the coronal portion of the tooth root consists of more Sharpies fibers compared to the cellular cementum. Then the acellular cementum appears to be more calcified compared to the cellular cementum. As we know, the cellular cementum will contain a lot of cells and fibers which increases the organic content of the cellular cementum compared to acellular cementum which is more calcified. Now the thickness, the acellular cementum appears quite thin as you can see in the image. It is about 20 to 50 microns in the cervical area and can maximum go up to the size of 150 to 200 microns. Unlike the cellular cementum, which is quite thicker compared to the acellular cementum, the thickness can range from 100 to 1000 micrometers. And finally, the function of acellular cementum. 
It provides anchorage to the tooth, whereas the cellular cementum functions in adaptation and repair. Now, what is anchorage? As we saw that the acellular cementum contains more Sharpies fibers. And the functions of these fibers are they connect the periodontal ligament from the tooth to the alveolar bone. That's how the tooth gets its anchorage. Unlike the cellular cementum, which functions in adaptation and repair. So whenever there is any kind of a trauma or fracture of the dentine or cementum, there are areas of resorption that are created. And these areas are filled by cellular cementum. That's how they function differently. Now coming to the different forms of cementum. There are four different forms of cementum. Two cellular types and two acellular types. And they are also divided based on the presence of types of fibers or the origin of fibers in the cementum. First is acellular afibrillar cementum. Then there is acellular extrinsic fiber cementum. Then there is cellular mixed stratified cementum and cellular intrinsic fiber cementum. Now what is this intrinsic, extrinsic, mixed and afibrillar? Remember that the intrinsic means the fibers from the cementocytes itself, that is the cells in this produce these fibers. That's why it is called as intrinsic. You can see in this image that these are the cementocytes and they secrete fibers into the cellular cementum. Extrinsic fibers are those which come from the PDL and not from the cementocytes. These fibers are basically secreted by the fibroblasts of the PDL. So these fibers which insert into the cementum are called as Sharpies fibers. So these are extrinsic fibers. When the fibers are secreted both from the cementocytes and from PDL, it is called as mixed. And when there are no fibers, it's termed as afibrillar. Coming on to the first type, acellular afibrillar cementum. That suggests that there are no cells and there are no fibers. Now this type of cementum is mainly found in the cervical portion of the enamel. This is the enamel surface, this is the dentine, and the ACC represents the acellular afibrillar cementum, which marginally overlaps the enamel near the CJ, and if you can see the magnified image here, you can see a lamellar pattern of deposition of cementum. These lines represent the rest periods, which are more calcified than the rest of the cementum. So the acellular afibular cementum will have no cells and no fibers and present in the cervical region. Then you have the acellular extrinsic fiber cementum. So this type of cementum is found mainly in the coronal and middle portion of the tooth root. So the acellular extrinsic fiber cementum will be present below or apical to the acellular afibrillar cementum, mainly in the middle and the coronal portions of the tooth root. As the name suggests, it is not going to have any kind of cells, but it will have fibers. Those are the Sharpies fibers or the external fibers from the periodontal ligament. It has a most important function because it gives attachment to the fibers. It is an important part of the attachment apparatus that connects the tooth with the bundle bone, that is the alveolar bone. Then coming to the cellular types, cellular mixed stratified cement. It is found mainly in the apical third of the roots and in the furcation area. This zone represents the cellular mixed stratified cementum. These tiny areas are the cementocytes and they contain both extrinsic fibers, that is the Sharpies fibers from the periodontal ligament, as well as the fibers secreted by the cementocytes. Those are the intrinsic fibers. And the cellular mixed stratified cementum is most commonly seen in the Focation areas and the apical areas. Now you also have cellular intrinsic fiber cementum. It is found mainly in the resorption lacunae and it contains intrinsic fibers and cementocytes. So this is how a cementocyte typically appears. It has got different canaliculi radiating out of its surface. And this is the nucleus which says the cementocytes are functioning. And this is the distribution of the cementocytes within the cellular intrinsic fiber cementum. So the fibers which are present are formed by the cementocytes themselves. As I said, these are present in the resorption lacunae. This is a ground section of the resorption lacunae and this is a clinical picture. If you see, there's a discontinuity in the dentine in the root. Whenever there is excessive force, there's any trauma or there is an orthodontic tooth movement, these pressure areas are created where you can see the dentine or some portion of cementum is lost. So these areas are generally filled by the cellular intrinsic fiber cementum. Now the distribution of these four types of cementum will give us a brief idea of how cementum is distributed along the tooth root. The acellular afibular cementum mainly present in the coronal portion. The cellular extrinsic fiber cementum present apical to the acellular afibular cementum and the function is anchorage because it gives attachment to the Sharpies fibers of the periodontal ligament.
Then the cellular intrinsic fiber cementum, as we discussed, it is present in the resorption lacinase, and the cellular mixed stratified cementum, which occupies the apical zone and the furcation areas. Coming on to the clinical considerations of cementum, now why do we need to know about cementum? Cementum provides anchorage to the tooth as it provides attachment for the periodontal ligament fibers and connects the tooth to the bone. That's how it provides anchorage. Apical deposition compensates for the occlusion attrition. Cementum has the ability to be deposited throughout life. So whenever there is occlusal attrition or reduction in the height of the tooth, it is compensated by the apical formation of cementum. Now cementum does not easily undergo resorption. It is resistant to resorption. That's how orthodontic tooth movements are facilitated. So there is no major loss of tooth structure or bone. Anatomical repair is another function of cementum. Now whenever there is a defect in the cementum, new cementum forms and fills the defect and gives back the original morphology. However, when the defect is large, the cementum can only cover with a thin layer into the resorption areas and the bone grows into the areas to give a complete functional repair. To summarize, cementum is a calcified avascular tissue and covers the tooth root and there are two major types that's the cellular cementum and acellular cementum. The acellular cementum covers the coronal part of the tooth and the cellular cementum covers the apical part of the tooth root. Then there are four different forms of cementum. Acellular afibular cementum, acellular extrinsic fiber cementum, cellular intrinsic fiber cementum and cellular mixed stratified cementum. Remember cementum is characterized by continuous deposition throughout life. We also have a small exercise for you. You can find the link to the Google document in the description of this video. You can give a shot at those MCQs and try to find out how much you learned about this topic today. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you liked it. And if you do, please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Till then, stay healthy and have an amazing week.